Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about asses and bases. I have a pretty cool demo for you and a little bit of an activity that you can do at home. So to be able to do this activity, you will want to, um, and you can order this right on Amazon or something, you wanna get yourself some pH paper. Um, pH paper is, um, if you look at a slip of it, you might actually have some laying around if you have a swimming pool or something like that. But it's this little, um, sh these strips of this particular one is orange paper that when you dip it into a substance, it'll change color um, because it, it does have an indicator chemical in it. So that means that it will change color depending on if it's in the presence of an acid or a base. And they come with like this little chart in there. So when you dip it into something, you can kind of line it up and see um, where the, what color it changed to and that will reveal to you what the pH is. So let's start by talking about what acids and bases are. So an acid versus a base, it depends on how many hydrogen ions or the concentration of hydrogen ions that are in that substance that would make it acidic or basic. Um, if you are a pH of seven, if a substance has a pH of seven, that means that it's neutral. So like pure water is neutral. It's not acidic, nor is it basic. When you get below seven, the closer you get to zero, the more acidic a substance is. And above seven, the closer you get to 14, the more basic it is. Now, again, that has all to do with the concentration of hydrogen ions. That's not something that's typically helpful or useful when we're talking about household items. But acids and bases in general do have some uses um, that, are, that are helpful to us. So some acids that you're familiar with are things like um, uh, um, citrus, fruits, lemons, oranges, those are acidic, vinegar, some cleaning solutions, those types of things tend to be more acidic. You'll notice that they can be sour in, the, in taste, um, they're very useful in medicines and things like that, and they're very, they tend to be very water soluble. So for example, if you got some strong acid or an acid on your skin, you're, um, you're in pretty good shape if you can get to water to rinse it off. It'll rinse, it'll actually rinse off you pretty easily. Bases, on the other hand, those are the ones that have a pH above seven. Those are used for completely different things. They are still used um, in cleaning products. They're actually used in a lot of soaps. Most soaps are basic. Um, things like deodorant, drain cleaner is actually a very strong base. But um, bases tend to be a little bit more um, people always think that acids are very dangerous, but bases are actually, like a strong base is probably a little bit more dangerous than a strong acid because not only will a strong base burn you if it comes into contact with your skin, um, it tends to stick to you, whereas an acid will rinse right off of you. You've probably experienced this in your life if you've ever gone to wash your hands and you use a little bit too much soap and the soap kind of sticks to you and you kind of got to work at it a little bit to get it all off. That is a characteristic of a, of a base. So imagine having a strong base on you and not only are you, you know, you're trying to rinse it off, but it's sort of sticking to you because it rejects that water without working at it a little bit. Bases also tend to have sort of a bitter taste, whereas acids have a, that sour taste, but don't go around taste testing things to see if they're acidic or basic. Um, just get yourself some pH paper. So I have a couple of examples here for you. Um, I have uh, right here, I have some lime juice. So I'm gonna take my piece of pH paper and just put a little dot of, uh, of lime juice on it here. And you can see that if I hold it up to my paper, we get a nice red color, right? like maybe in between these two. So lime juice is a pretty strong acid. Now you might think that that's kind of weird because I just said like between like zero and one would be the strongest. So let's say that this has a pH of about 1.5 and maybe battery acid is closer to one or 0.5. You might think like, wow, how is lime juice so close in pH to something like battery acid? So one thing that's interesting about the pH scale is every step down you go in the pH. So as you go from say two to one, one is actually 10 times more acidic than two. If you were to go from three to one, you would, go, you would go three to two to one. And remember, each jump down is 10 times more acidic. So one is actually 100 times more acidic than three. All right, and then here I also have, um, I have some bleach to show you what it does. And as you can see, bleach gives us a bluish color here, maybe somewhere between nine and 11. So again, something that you can do is you can take your um, pH paper 
and go around and test different substances in your home to see if they're acidic or basic. There are some natural indicators out there, um, like found in nature, that are pretty interesting. Uh, one example of this is the hydrangea flower, the, the shrub one, not the tree one. Um, if they're planted in acidic soil, those big, beautiful, um, you know, spherical blooms of flowers, they'll actually be more of a bluish purple color. And if they're planted in basic soil, they'll be more of a pinkish red color. So there are certain um, um, plants out there that will grow better in acidic soil or will grow a certain color in acidic soil versus basic soil. Now let's check out some liquid indicators in the lab. Okay, so I'm back here in my lab. Um, as I showed you at home, the use of pH paper is a really easy way to test pH at home. As I told you, you can just order those test strips right on Amazon. Um, but for today, what I'm gonna show you um, are some indicators that are not as easy to get a hold of and you wouldn't really have any other purpose for them. And they, some of them are actually pretty um, noxious chemicals. So the three that I've got here today are uh, bromocresol green, which is this like dark greenish color. I've got methyl orange, which is like an orange color. And then I've got uh, phenolphthalein, say that 10 times fast, um, which is clear. In each of the beakers in front of me, there is an acid and a base. And what's really cool, and I think I have it gone, it goes acid base, acid base, and so forth. So I'm gonna take each of these solutions and put them into the acid and the base so that you can see just how remarkable the difference in color is and how good these are at revealing whether or not something is acidic or basic. So I'm gonna start with the bromocresol green. I'm gonna put these uh, right up front so you can clearly see the difference in uh, color change here. And again, this is just like this murky dark green color. So I'm gonna start by putting it into the acid. I'm gonna put quite a bit of it in there so you can see. Look at the difference in color change. It's going to a nice bright yellow. So you can see the two if I put them right next to each other like that. And then here's what that same chemical does if I put it into a base. You get that nice bright blue color. Look at that, look how different that is. And then Look at the difference between the two. So that dark green murky chemical changes color dramatically, whether it's in an acid or a base. You're gonna see a similar thing happen with your um, methyl orange here. Again, it starts as like a dark orange color, very clear solution. Here's what that does in an acid. So it turns a, uh, a dark red color. This one is more orange than this one. This is red. And then in a base, this one turns a dark yellow color. And again, I'm going to hold these right next to each other so you can see how the same chemical varies depending on if it's in an acid or a base. Now this last one, phenolphthalein, this one's my favorite. Um, in an acid, it doesn't do very much at all. So again, this is a clear solution here. If I put it in an acid, it doesn't really do anything. It, it gets cloudy, but then eventually that will fade away. So not really much happens there. But when you put it in a base, I'm actually just gonna dump this right in. It turns this wonderful dark pink color. I actually have a pair of pants that color. We call them my phenolphthalein pants, my students. Now, every time I do this, my students always ask, well, what happens if you were to mix them? So let's do it. Acid and a base, what do you think will happen? Well, they'll neutralize. As far as what will happen to the color, let's find out. So I've still got kind of a light yellow color here. So that means out of the two that I mixed, my acid must have been a little bit stronger than my base in this case, since yellow won the day. I'll do the same thing here with my methyl orange ones. And again, red seems to be the dominant color here, which means again, that my acid must have been stronger. And we'll finish up with my phenolphthalein here. That is cool, right? This dark pink 
gone when I pour it in there. Look at that. The acid wins again and that dark pink color goes away.